is information about our guest this hour, Saran Stacy. Saran Stacy uh, uh, hasn't visited in a while. We're glad to have him back on the program. Um, a lot of you uh, may be aware of Saran's story, but uh, if you are not, um, uh, I'll kind of share some of it. Obviously, Saran is uh, at one time was best known for being an outstanding uh, college and professional football player and uh, is the father of, of five children. And uh, everything changed in 2007 uh, in a horrific uh, car crash involving a, a drunk driver when uh, Sharan's family was, was hit. Uh, and uh, the heartbreaking part of that story at the time uh, was that uh, the only survivors from the crash were Saran himself uh, and his daughter Shelly, and his wife and the other four children stepped into eternity, thus changing everything forever uh, for Saran Stacy. and he joins us again today. Saran, how you doing, brother? Good morning. It's great to be here. Uh, first of all, let me ask you this. How's your daughter doing? Shelly's doing great. Uh, she is eight years old at this time. Uh, she uh, attends Emanuel Christian School in Dothan, Alabama. I uh, have a, just a, surrounded by a group of people that love her uh, tremendously. And God is just making a way uh, for her and myself and my family. And so, um, you know, here we are right now, going on four years, yeah. November the 19th, yeah. and uh, we are still standing. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and we all have watched this and mm-hmm. watched your testimony and, um, and, and seen the, the passion uh, that uh, only something like this can bring. You know, I know, I know you've been uh, compared to, uh, and, and our family has had to, to study the book of Job in a way that we never had mm-hmm. before. And, uh, you know, one of the things you, you see there, and, and we've talked about it so many times, um, is, you know, at the end of Job's life, even though we know that when the, the, the story begins, we don't find a man who is, uh, who, do, who is not doing what God asked him to do. Uh, we find a man that you would think would know everything there is to know about God by the way he's serving him. But even he says at the end, well, before I'd heard of you, but now mm-hmm. I see you through my pain and suffering. Yes. I, I know you in a way I, I, I didn't know you before, and you allowed me to go through this. And now I'm better for it, and my relationship with you is stronger than ever. And uh, but you know, one of the things that we we see in there is I was mentioning your your beautiful children, and uh, and I think about often about my son is that when you see Job get restored at the end, all the livestock, all the land, all the money is returned double. But he had ten children, and they were mm-hmm. all allowed to be taken. Yes, and then mm-hmm. he has ten more. Mm-hmm. Which means they were double because he never lost the original ten. They're just they were just waiting on him in eternity. That's good. That's and good. Uh, you know that part of that story I'd never noticed before until after we'd gone through our suffering. Uh, you know, animals and land and money. Mm-hmm. You know, God doubled that again because that that's not eternal. But those mm-hmm. children are eternal, and they still had the original ten. Amen. So they were double when he got ten more. Amen. Yeah. The one thing that uh, you know, many things you know, come to my mind when I read the book of Job. Um, but the one thing that I'm just really centered upon is that Job never knew. He never knew that day was coming. Mm-hmm. He it, he had no uh, negotiation. He did, he didn't have not any ego- negotiation um, about what was about to happen in his life. And along the way, you know, as I kept, continue to read that story, and I hear people and they ask me, you know, why. Uh, did I lose my son and why did I lose uh, my mother and why did God take, uh, you know, from me? And my answer is this, is that God knows the end. Mm -hmm. He knows the end of all things and he knows the beginning of all things. And so somehow, though Job didn't know, God knew. And and here we are. I don't know the end to my life. I'm persuaded that the end of my life won't be 11, 1907. It, right. I will not be known just by this horrific uh, tragedy that happened. I, I'm, I believe that. And, 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 and here we are, you know, right now in my life, I, I can be able to say that the better days will be better than the former day because I believe and I trust God. Somehow God knows the end from the beginning. Somehow we, we are not privy to, 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 to tap in to why a son or a daughter or a wife or a husband is, is taken away. But God's going to get glory out of it. He's getting glory out of my life. No question. Amen. He's an he's a anything God. 
He's a, was, I was reading this morning, Jeremiah thirty-two seventeen, 17, and it says, is there anything too hard for God? He can do anything at any time with anyone. And so he, he can turn my life. He, he's turning my life. He's turning, he's turning a, 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 a broken, uh, he's, t- he's turning a depressed, uh, he's turning weeping into laughter. He's, he's bringing joy back. He's, he's doing it because he can do anything. He can, he's a anything God. And so, and so though Job went through what he went through, he was, he was restored double at the end. God knew that. I don't know what God has for me. You, you don't know what God has for you. And someone I'm speaking to right now that's going through some type of, I don't know, some type of trial, some type of recession, some type of brokenness. Uh, you don't know the end to it. God knows. But the thing that God wants out of each and every one is to believe him, believe that he can do it. The one thing that Satan, this enemy, this force that wants to kill, steal, and destroy, the one thing he wants is our he, for us not to believe God. I'm, I'm convinced that the root of all sin is unbelief. People don't believe that they can come out of it. They, they just don't believe that, 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 that their life can be turned around or they don't believe that they'll never be happy again. They don't believe that, that you know, because of this tragedy that, that, that's happened to them, that they will not be able to come through it. But if you trust and believe God, he says he's an anything God. He can do anything. He can take the very, the very lowest of the low and bring life to it. He can, he can go to the dark place. The Bible says that David says, if I make my bed in hell, thou art there too. There's nowhere God is. There's nowhere he cannot be. So even if you're in the hellish place, even if you're in a darkness place, he's a anything God. He can, he can come there and turn it around. I'm persuaded by this, Rick, Bubba, uh, and my, my good friend Speed. I'm persuaded that the best years of my life is in front of me. I refuse to limit God. I refuse to limit the power of God. I, the, the grace of God. That, that's what I'm going to be getting into this weekend uh, at Mountaintop uh, Church here in Birmingham. A great, just an incredible series that the pastors there have been doing, this profile of a player. And, and it's talking about athletics, you know, me being a former player. What's the profile? What, is, what does it mean to go out and play in the kingdom of God? And I'm going to get into one of, because uh, we're going to be coming out of Acts uh, 2.42, uh, 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 one, one of the things that the scripture was talking about was prayer. He was talking about, you know, we know Acts, uh, uh, my Bible readers know in Acts chapter 22 on the day of Pentecost. And then Peter, he does this incredible sermon. And then the Bible says that 3,000 souls were saved that day. And then they go down in verse 42. It talks about they started getting into the doctrine. They're getting into the, the, to the, uh, the fellowship together. And then they got into the breaking of bread. And then they started praying. And that's going to be my message this weekend on prayer. We'll come back and we'll talk more with Saran Stacy about that. If you want to find out, uh, you know, Saran speaks a number of places, Birmingham, Alabama, Mountaintop, uh, church this weekend. All the directions, all the information, where is that? Where is it located? Is there on show notes today? If you want to find that out, if you want to find out uh, how to book Saran or go to see him somewhere else, SaranStacy.org uh, is there as well. More with Saran Stacy next. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Visiting with Saran Stacy. You can find uh, the website SaranStacy.org uh, for all the information. If you want to see Saran speak this weekend. Uh, and if you uh, live or can travel to the Birmingham area, Mountaintop Community Church Sunday, find out about the services, how to get there, all that information uh, there at rickandbubba.com. So, Saran, um, I-, I take it, uh, if-, if we go, what is Saran Stacy doing now? Uh, obviously, you're talking about uh, this weekend. Is this um, uh, the majority of your time is spent going and speaking at different places now? What, what, tell us what's going on with you today. Yes, yes. I have uh, submitted to full-time ministry. Uh, and so I travel uh, a number uh, of places. I go literally all over the world. Uh, in 2010, uh, the Lord opened up doors uh, for me to travel as far as uh, Vincenza, Italy, speak to the 173rd U.S. Uh, Airborne wow. Int- Infantry Division. And I was over there seven days uh, breaking bread with mm. um, men and women that are the real heroes of our country. Um, I was prior to that. I was over in uh, 2010. I was in Dominican Republic, um, out there going through orphanages, uh, going through 
uh, some very uh, heartbreaking uh, villages. And um, but there it is, you know, God is everywhere and just over there breaking bread, over there loving uh, young teenagers. You know, I, I was you and I were speaking earlier about these, you know, these kids, they're so hungry um, to to be loved, to participate in athletics. And I was over there trying to teach a group of the Dominican Republic kids how to play American football. And then <laughs> I, and they, they were so appreciative. And then I, I come back home and I go into high schools because I do a lot of my ministry in high schools. And, and, and I'm looking at kids that are just lazy, kids that are just gimme, gimme, gimme spirit, kids that wants to blame mommy and daddy and and they wants to blame the coach. They wants to blame everybody for their own inability to just go out there and do what God has blessed them to do. Uh, I mean, God's blessed many of our young people with a school, uh, with a home, with a father, with a mother, and, and they're complaining. And they're, they're not thankful. And, and, and we need to go back to uh, particularly with our leaders, our, our parents, train up a child in a way that it should go. And when they get older, they will not depart. I mean, we, we, cannot, we, we cannot cut the... You know, we cannot cut the corners with our young people right now. Uh, we, we cannot we cannot allow our children to, uh, to get DUIs and 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 continue to give them driver's license. We, we cannot allow them to come in at two and three in the morning or or allow their boyfriend or their girlfriend to stay the night in their home. What is going on in our country where where, you know, right is right and wrong is wrong. And somehow the wrong is portrayed to be right. So, yes. Rand, let, let me ask you this, too, because I, I remember you uh, when you came on the scene in college uh, mm-hmm. running. And uh, ha- have you always been this strong in your faith or was there a, a big change when you had to go through this horrific accident or mm-hmm. where have you been all along? How, how has your faith progressed over the no, years? No, no, I have not always been this strong in my faith. I've always been in the word. My father, and my mother, I was raised up in the church and I was Christian at an early age, uh, but I did not live the Christian life. And so I was one of those individuals that could put on the church mask. I can be, you know, a church boy around everybody. But then when I got, you know, to, to, to college and when I got in the National Football League, I would be into some places that, that I know I had no business uh, being. And I was around some people that I had no business being around. And, and, and though God was with me, I, I still was not where I needed to be as a man. You had not submitted to his authority. I had not. He was your savior, but he wasn't your Lord. Amen. Amen. And so and so when this, you know, even in 2004, I can go back to, I started doing prison ministry and I just started doing FCA groups and, and I was, I loved to do it outside of my regular job, which was, which was in the uh, banking industry, but but I was still, even at that point, I was kind of like most men, we, 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 we have a sense of entitlement that, that we can go out because we pay the bills, we, we pay the house note, uh, we, can, we can go out and kind of indulge in things. When, when we're in different states, not, not here at home, you know, <laughs> yeah. we, we, when we're away. You know. Well, you, you, yeah. you know, the thing, the problem about when you let your flesh make decisions for you, mm-hmm. your flesh will say do whatever you want. You deserve it. Yes. Because that's kind of the job of the flesh. Yeah, the, the flesh will let you do it, and you can justify anything. Yes, you Until can. you have to come under the authority and the lordship of a right and wrong that's black and white based on something bigger than you says. Yes, yes. It, something it, perfect. Yes, and it goes right back to what we were talking about earlier, believe in God and unbelief. But, and you, but you talked about the parenting, and I see mm-hmm. parents, and, mm-hmm. and we've all been guilty of it to a degree, mm-hmm. but I, I see parents all the time. They think they're doing their children a service by trying to go and do everything for them to to circumvent authority in those children's life to try to constantly try to say it's punishment the, it's, of their it, what yeah, they do yeah they, yes. no punishment no anything oh mm-hmm. give them this give them that give, mm-hmm. and they don't know the disservice because if you can't train up a child to respect authority in the home mm-hmm. at the school on mm-hmm. the athletics field mm-hmm. they'll never respect the authority of God yes most and certainly you, you're breeding mm-hmm. a disrespect for authority and they won't ever respond to the authority of the ultimate of the yes. ultimate authority yes the apostle Paul clearly talked about that in Romans 13 and verses one right. he, he he was speaking about authority he said if someone is in authority they have been ordained by God 
and and, and that and, and that and, and that you should honor that. You should you should submit to that higher authority, whoever it may be. It may be your pastor, it may be your school teacher, it may be your father or mother. Sometimes if, you don't like it, right? Right. It, but, it's, but you it, have to fall under that authority. Amen. So so we may not have voted for Obama, <laughs> but 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 we still honor our president. We we may not like our school principal, but we still honor him. We submit to them, and and because the scripture says that that individual has been ordained by God. If you don't under if you don't honor your father and mother, then you dishonor God. If I don't honor our president, then I dishonor my God because God placed them there. That's what the Paul was talking about. And so with our young people particularly, we have to go back to submitting to authority. The and, scripture tells and, us this. And if you've been placed in a place of authority, you have to take responsibility for the people that you've been placed authority over. Most certainly. We also have a, a, a sick thing in this country right now that people who are responsible for their families will take no responsibility for them mm. you know because i'm telling you especially men mm-hmm. when we stand before god mm-hmm. we're going to be asked one of two questions yes what did you do with my son mm-hmm. what did you do with 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 that grace i showed you yes what what did you do for my kingdom mm-hmm. and the second one is and what did you do with the family i gave you mm. what, what 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 was what resulted out of that home that's under good. your leadership that's good you yeah. know it, 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 it goes into my message this weekend on prayer you know, Job, the Bible said that and that Job prayed, prayed continually for his sons and his daughters and every know. single that, day. I noticed that every time and, I read that story. And, and, you know, I, I, you Even know, when they were cutting up, you he, saw one thing where they weren't doing right. right. He went, in there he went and out and made sacrifices for right, them. Yeah. Right, right. And I pray for and I, and I, I pray for all of my I, you know, I pray for Shelly. And I pray for all of my children. Shelly is not my only child. I do have other children uh, with another uh, woman outside of uh, my marriage. Um, and we'll uh, talk about I, that. Yeah, we can make. But, and I love them all. We'll be right back. Stay close. Bubba.